This is your morning in eight minutes. We are continuing to follow breaking news out of Cock County where authorities are searching for an escaped inmate this morning. The sheriff tells us the man on your screen was last seen going through the Food City parking lot on Broadway in Newport last night. Sheriff CJ Ball says 37 year old Stephen Jones escaped from the Cock County Detention Center. Officials say Jones is homeless and already facing multiple charges, including DUI and possession. Officers have been searching downtown Newport. Jones could be wearing blue jeans, a dark blue shirt and a black hat. The sheriff's office is investigating how he even managed to escape. If you see him, call the number on your screen. It's inside your WVLT News app as well. Well, we know the story matters to you. We'll continue to update you on this search this morning. Yeah, stay with us on air and as always inside your WVLT News app. And in Fentress County, a married couple set to appear in front of a judge on child abuse and neglect charges. Authorities say one of their adopted kids was sent to the hospital for malnourishment. Police responded to Jason and Jessica Klimp's home on a report of an unconscious child. Doctors believe the child was six years old, but was actually 12. The Klimps have four biological children and have adopted four. And the children told TBI that the girl and her biological sister were forced to sleep in totes in the basement as punishment for wetting the bed. They also said they were not allowed to have blankets in the basement. Both of the Klimps face aggravated child abuse, neglect and endangerment charges in court this morning. We're told a representative from UT Children's Hospital will be questioned as to the children's condition. And this morning, police in Alcoa need your help of finding five people accused of vandalizing an apartment construction site. Investigators say they found destroyed appliances, light fixtures, flooding in multiple apartments, and paint splattered everywhere. Take a look at your screen. You can see the five people at the Ardmore apartment construction site. Alcoa PD says they look like kids. They say it likely happened last weekend sometime after 5 o'clock on Friday after construction workers left. Due to the amount of damage, we're still working to find out how much repairs could cost. If you know anything, call the East Tennessee Valley Crime Stoppers. Their number is inside your WVLT News app. Meanwhile, search crews from across Tennessee are back in Hendersonville today looking for any sign of Sebastian Rogers. 200 trained professionals have been searching the area around Sebastian's home in Sumner County. He's been missing for over a month and investigators have very few clues as to actually what happened to him. The Sumner County Sheriff says the search could go on for days. They're checking woods, fields and ponds that are near his home. A pair of glasses that the Sheriff's Office says they found are actually not Sebastian's. We'll of course bring you any developments. We get them all morning long. Well, check your pantry. We've got a recall alert for you this morning. Boxes of sea salt alligators candy are being recalled. The boxes could be mislabeled, posing a risk for people who have peanut allergies. They do not list nuts as an ingredient. The recalled eight ounce boxes have a chocolate covered cherry label with the code 0315 on the bottom. The FDA says no one has gotten sick from this so far, but if you do have this candy, you can return it for a refund. And spring is here. The flowers are blooming across East Tennessee. Yeah, to celebrate the return of the beautiful colors today, Dogwood Arts is holding a ribbon cutting to officially open the Dogwood Trails for the 2024 season. The Dogwood Arts celebration start at the Sequoia Hill Trail. This afternoon, Sequoia is the first trail they set up. And this year, the organization is highlighting the West Knoxville Trails. So there's going to be a ribbon cutting ceremony with food, music, and a maker's market. The trails first opened up in 1955. They now cover more than 90 miles throughout 13 neighborhoods in Knoxville. Well, you didn't wake up a billionaire this morning. No one else did. That means you still <laughs> got a chance to play the Powerball even bigger. It's now grown to $1.23 billion. And in case you missed it, those winning numbers, 11, 38, 41, 62, 65, Powerball 15. There hasn't been a winner since New Year's Day. So this weekend could be your lucky chance. The cash option, $595 million. The next drawing, Saturday night at 11. It is 6.54. We want to get a check of your first floor traffic with Chris and Allen. Good morning. It's still nice and quiet out there for the most part, although we are starting to see more traffic get out there. This is I-40 out at Paper Mill Drive, where you can see it's looking pretty good here in West Knoxville. Again, that traffic flow is increasing, but not seeing any delays so far. I-40 Hall of Fame Drive going into downtown Knoxville. Looking smooth is so far. Again, seeing more folks head downtown, but not seeing any delays to tell you about just yet. So that's some good news for you if you are getting out the door here soon. Taking a look here at your big picture. No uh, delays to tell you about there. Your interstates and main roads are all clear. Getting a quick look at those drive times. 75 south from Raccoon Valley Road to 640, taking you nine minutes. 640 west from 75 to 40, taking you three minutes. And 40 west from Asheville Highway to Paper Mill Drive, taking you nine minutes to get this Thursday started. 
five minutes to seven now. If you're just trying to get your day started, let me say that jacket's going to really come in handy, especially if it blocks a little drizzle mist. Okay, you could see a few flakes flying. That's what we're seeing mix in right here in northeast Tennessee around Campbell County to Claiborne up into Bell and Harlan as these drizzly showers still drift in. Notice temperature is actually right around normal, but it doesn't feel like it. 45 Knoxville, 41 Oneida, 38 Crossville. Wind chills literally moving in with these few well, raindrops to flurries. They're going to continue to drop southeast at about 30 miles per hour. So that means you've got uh, really what will be a drizzle over Oak Ridge, even though it's showing up as a few flurries in Southern Scott. That's headed your way about 715. Hardin Valley about 730 to Cedar Bluff 740. Get those little drizzly showers through Bearden around 745. But we'll keep these showers going this morning, become spotty and stay chilly. The winds continue today, gusting up to 30 miles per hour. So look at this hour by hour for your whole day. The best we can do is feeling like mid 40s this afternoon. Wind chills freezing at times this morning, feeling like 39 at 11, feeling like 45 this afternoon. So that's why that jacket's coming in handy. Next couple of mornings actually get even colder, and that is because of this cold air settling in, bringing down some patchy frost by the mornings this weekend and keeping us with wind chills today and tomorrow. So that dogwood winter and last going into your weekend, but at least the afternoons improved dramatically in your first alert eight day planner. Now keep in mind, we're also tracking shower for next week, even those temperatures return to 70s. So a lot going on that we're tracking for you coming up on the CW. I will say I'm not thrilled about all the rain, but I do like that the weekend's looking nice. That's, That's true. Is That's looking really nice. We'll take that. All right, we're headed over to WBXX, the CW in Oxville on this Thursday. It's World Rat Day. Oh, Doesn't that make right. you want to celebrate? We'll have yeah. more on Wild Inside coming up. <laughs>